What's up, and his fam? You already know what time it is. We're back here with another banger. banger. Yes, sir. We got K pop history in 20 minutes from Soyu Taji to BTS. Let's get into it. Ooh. In 20 minutes, man. By that time, y'all should already like. There's one thing this order. video needs. K-pop! 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 Popular music originating in South Korea and encompassing a variety of styles. As you've seen, K-pop has grown exponentially. Everyone in the world, like it or not, must have seen a K-pop related video at least once. Either if it's Gangnam Style or a BTS video or an annoying K-pop dancing meme on Twitter. But you might not be sure on what K-pop actually is and where and when it began. Well, it all comes down to a country called South Korea. a peninsula located in East Asia in between China and Japan. Korea was doing great with its kingdoms and dynasties for more than 4,000 years until 1910 to back. 1945 when Korea was colonized by Japan. And from 1950 to 1953, the Korean War happened, splitting Korea into North and South. Then Korea was stuck in the Cold War. Due to war and all, the economy wasn't that great. Thus, the music industry wasn't that public nor diverse. Well, Korea did have Yo. music like <laughs> traditional sounds or Japanese-influenced trot. 1970s, economy got a little better. Jeans, with Samsung, shout guitars, out Samsung. Young kids enjoying life, rock, folk music happened, but still the government doesn't like too much freedom and creativity. They want you to work, 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 work. <laughs> 1980s, two words, folk songs and ballads. First, Korean Watch ballads kick in. People like these dudes make ballad really popular. Legendary dudes like Cho Young Pir pop out. Bands like Shinoe and Tribuka pop out. People start listening to these dudes instead of these dudes. Until the 90s, Korea oh, in that rich. country, no one's That's unemployed. Probably. People call it the miracle of Han River. Successful Olympics, CD distribution, kids get to wear Nike shoes, buy music, go to concerts, clubs happen, dancing becomes a thing. Finally, the good old 90s arrived. Ding yeah. ding. Hi. Hi. Yeah. I'm K-pop. All He's these new genres start to yes. Hip-hop, dance, R&B, soul, gospel. And of course, the popularity of ballads and folk songs gospel? continue. Now, all these artists start writing their own songs. A lot of singer-songwriters appear like Shin Sung-un, Lee Seung-hwan, Yoon Jong-shin, Cheol Lam-hae, Toy, and more. Boom. March 1992. This dude named Kho appears yeah, out of no nowhere. Point. Well, actually, he was in the aforementioned rock band shin as a bassist, though in the meantime, he was doing his own thing and explores the world of MIDI music aka electronic digital. He's also a born rebel. He looks different. His crew dances like crazy. His band's Hot Teji and Kids like released an album called Yo Teji with the title song called I Know. They just sweep all the existing awards out there. Similar groups like Juice might be competitors, but Hot Teji and Kids and their songs and performances change everything. Critics claim 1992 is the most important year in Korean pop music history. He destroys genres like trot, ballad, and folk music. They released four albums afterwards until 1996. He mixes up hip hop and traditional music in Hayoga. He also likes techno and even uses heavy metal rock in classroom idea criticizing the Korean education system. And then the public suddenly tries to rewind the song and thinks he's Satan or gay. They keep on tackling social issues like reunification, environment, drugs, education. He's basically the Tupac of K-pop. Speaking of Tupac, he even touches Korean. Gangster okay. Rap his last album title, That's Come Back Home. And then they disband, more like disappear. Poof, yup, just like that. Leaving one message, we've showed you everything we can try. Korea freaks out, kids don't go to school, protest, attempt suicide. Wow. People say K-pop is dead, wow. well false alarm. Sotaejin kids might be gone, but their impact still lives. Now, listening, radio equals lame. On the other hand, watching TV, performances, dance music, choreography, cool. style, competition equals cool. Young teenage fans, official fan clubs, fan meetings, fan fix, housing fans, fan wars, capital, artist management. It was like a cult, and Sotaejin and kids were their idol. On the side, the tornado dance from mm. I Know was the first dance choreo that went viral. So now, corporate see people. money in K-pop and idol businesses. Samsung, Tucson, Hyundai, LG, Daewoo, Lotte all make their own record companies and labels. Competition begins. Huge investments flow from their mother company. Ambitious scouting, projects, new market, but no system yet. Expenses overissued, no transparency, business based on few inner circle connections. Result, obviously all gone in a few years. Big failure. But then there's DSP. The founder, Yi ho had some actual experience managing big artists like Tejina, Yu Yu, Shimshin, and So Bang Cha. So Bang Cha was actually close to an idol group model way before Sa Tejin Kids in 1987. However, their music was more trap based and had very simple dances, thus not as impactful as an idol group like Sa Tejin and Kids. Anyways, Yi ho who had the experience, makes his own label DSP in 1991. Wasn't really successful during the Sateji era. Then in 1996, launches a group literally called Idol that initially had decent popularity, but gets demolished by SM Entertainment's HRT. Oh, 1996 shit. and HRT debuts, hardcore rap, distinct fashion, and hairstyles, criticizing society. HRT is made by today's famous <laughs> SM Entertainment, founded by Izuman, in short, SM. He starts as SM. Oh, that's the man. Okay. Then that's the man. You gotta respect them. So big ups to Lisa, man. 
Shout out to them. Into for... SM Entertainment in 1995. <laughs> SM develops a systematic idol training system and so earns huge success with HOT. DSP gets mad. Nah, 1997, they throw out text kits. SM activates their trap card. Girl Group SES debuts in December 1997. Okay. Yeah. And then DSP says, well, actually, no, vibes. IMF says, everyone hold your fire. Korea will be entering the economic crisis. People lose jobs, businesses go bankrupt, half of the entertainment labels shut down, TV music programs get canceled. People are struggling. They're jumping off bridges, so they aren't really cool or interested about idols. Well, 1998 comes, SMB like, the show must go on. Pops out Shinwa. DSP says, hold my beer. We present you Fink Cole. At this point, SM and DSP is the marvel in DC comics of this era. Okay. HOT versus Chexkiz, SES versus Fink Cole, Shinwa versus GOD. Well, G.O.D. was actually produced by a third company called J.Y.P. and wasn't actually oh, a typical dance idol group, yeah, but I'll get to that. Right Each company game. group shares the trophies and awards around music shows turn after turn. And of course, on the way, there were other groups like Baby Vox, Chakra, Clio, and talented solo artists like Yoo Jun, Park Ji Yoon, Lee Jung Yeon as well. Looking back, we now call this era the first generation of K-pop. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you might be wondering, whatever happened to Sotae Jin the boys after they disbanded? I don't know about Sotae Jin himself, but one dude for sure was planning something. Yang Yoon Seok, who was the rapper and dancer of Sotae Jin boys, was trying out his talent as a producer. Producer, but was kind of unlucky in the meantime. But anyways, opened up his own company, Hyun Label, in 1996, but kind of flopped with a group called Keep Six. Then renames his company to MF Label and launches the hip-hop duo, Jinushan. Jinushan surprisingly did pretty well, even though hip-hop was pretty new. Yang yeon -seok was well known to have an influence and background in hip-hop dance and music. He was spotted in Itaewon dancing all the time before his debut dates. So this background and success with Jinushan led him to reform his company into YG Entertainment and launched oh, another hip-hop group called One Time. Damn. First generation of K-pop was sparked by Seo and boys. Everything got systematic, like the trainee systems and all. Groups with crazy hair, crazy fashion, and dance music. K-pop's still kind of strange, new, but popular to the public. Kind of trying to imitate American pop. While corporate back labels died with the IMF crisis, labels with professional music background become big, like DSP, SM, and YG. It was the opening, a door to a new era, to the 21st century. Second generation begins. Wait says 1.5 gen. On the conversion to second gen, there is a transition stage. Surprisingly, a lot of solo artists who sing ballads are B, and groups that do ballads or rock become super popular. Song Shigeong, Hisong, Vibe, MC The Max, Buzz, The Cross, BOS, SG Wannabe. Then where'd K-pop go? Well, many talented solos were there to bridge the transition. The famous Boa, known as Asia's Star, arguably the most successful solo female K-pop artist in history from SM yeah. Entertainment. Got casted by Izuman himself on, and debuted don't play. Better recognize Also debuted in Japan. There Critics goes. state Boa is one of the biggest contributors Every. and pioneer in opening foreign markets for K-pop. Wow. Boa gets to get all these first, youngest, and most so blah 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 titles and rewrites K-pop history. Other solo artists also kept the K-pop flame burning with competitions such as Rain and Seven. Speaking of Rain, let's get back to JYP. Park Jin Young, aka JYP, is this dude movies? that was active during the Sotechi era as well. Initially, got refused numerous times from labels due to his <laughs> weird face and body, but finally <laughs> debuts in 1994 <laughs> as a solo body. artist. Tale is, SM himself rejects JYP from an audition, but later asks in private just because he wants to buy songs. JYP produced. JYP is extremely talented in dancing and also being sexy, which was a first for a male at that time. Won many number ones during the era even with the competition hey, hey. with Sateji and Kids. Became a singer-songwriter and producer and made hit songs like Honey and Sweet Baby. With that experience, goes on as a producer producing G.O.D. once called The Nation's Group and also excavates Park Jun who sang Adult Ceremony, also produced by JYP. And in the midst of that, makes his own company, JYP Entertainment. Back to Rain. Rain was a back dancer of JYP and Park Jun. JYP trained Rain and debuted him, also giving him many hit songs like How to Avoid the Sun and It's Raining. Boa from SM, Rain from JYP, Seven from YG. This is when we start to see the three companies grow and become the now known big three of K-pop, SM, JYP, YG. Another fun fact about the 1.5 generation is that many solo artists tried their luck after disbanding from the first generation groups like Kangta, Pada, Okjuyeon, Eunjiwon. However, to be honest, their popularity wasn't like before. Except maybe Iori, former Finkel member that was least popular among the members but suddenly pops up with a sexy solo debut and becomes Korea's diva. Finally, it's second gen. The idol groups are back and the public is used to the word idol. SM Entertainment introduces TVXQ in yeah. They get the rookie awards. Yeah. Actually, all the awards. Ketsu Taesang on their second debut 
debut year and gets a Grand Slam in 2006, another Grand Slam in 2008, or a Conch Hard number one in Japan. It's not a stretch to say they basically conquered Korea, Japan, and China. SM got rich, they make more groups like Super Junior in 2005, Girls' Generation in 2007, Shiny, and FX in 2009. Super Junior becomes extremely popular with songs like Sorry Sorry in China and Southeast Asia. Girls' Generation becomes the nation's girl group with their stunning visuals and charmful songs like Kissing You and Baby Baby. They don't stop with Korea, they go off to conquer Japan with their songs G, Genie, and O, bringing all those titles from Japan charts and album sales. Shiny puts out super addictive songs like Juliet, Ring Ding Dong, Lucifer, and achieves attention from mostly Japan and Southeast Asia, eventually touring all around these areas. FX shows the experimental side of SM, they carry a unique concept with all of their songs with obscure lyrics. Their unique electronic songs get very positive reactions from professional music critics. And note that we start to see non-Korean members, such as Victoria and Amber. With all these groups, SM is now all over Asia. Now SM might be big, no group could rival TVXQ, but here comes a big group. Big Bang. Big Bang from YG Entertainment is a little different. I see why they was going crazy too at the time. From a real survival program conducted by Young and himself, Big Bang places its roots into hip hop. 2007, they released their EP Always with the song Lies. This song was so big that it made them escalate to the top immediately. Then major hit songs after hit songs like Last Farewell, Haru Haru, Red Sunset make them the unquestionable number one group in Korea. They go on doing solo work, Japan activities, world tours, sweep awards, pointless to Damn. list achievements. They go on further with their career with mega hits like Blue, Fantastic Baby, song, Loser, Baby, Bang Bang Bang. Yeah, yeah. Big Bang becomes the most popular, influential, listened to group. No male group can rival them in the second gen except maybe early TVXQ. The biggest Damn. point that differentiated them would be that the general public, including men, loved and sang most most of their hit songs. Big Bang's leader G-Dragon produced most of these mega hit songs, they not to mention his successful to solo work, and lives as the biggest Korean fashion, music, and trend icon to this day. So who was Girls' Generation Damn, they bro? They was with YG Entertainment, too, God, probably damn. 21. Four-member group debuted yeah. in 2009 One. with a very different concept, strong female image. Oh, Releases mega hits See like yeah. Fire, I Don't Care, Go Away, Lonely, I Am The Best. They were the best. Ranked as one of the best K-pop groups of the past decade by Billboard, and a female group that finally offered an alternative concept from the traditional pretty cutesy girl group stereotype. Girls Generation and 21 weren't rivals in style because they were so different, however the two groups were huge and probably the most successful girl groups in second gen k-pop history. Speaking of girl groups, we have to go back to JYP because JYP is known as the girl group Royal Company. Wonder Girls is among one, debuted in 2007, put out major hits like Tell Me, So Hot, Nobody, which were all viral hits within the nation and Asia due to their simple and catchy point dances. In 2008 High One Soul Music Awards, they received their first Tezang as a girl group competing with Big Bang and TVXQ. Before Girls' Generation got extremely popular, they had the nation's girl group title in 2007 to 2008. Their style was distinct compared to Girls' Generation or 21 because it was mostly retro pop or electro funk. Wonder Girls were the first to appear on an American TV show, showing the possibilities of expansion of really? K-pop to the West. Wow. Nobody was the first K-pop song to enter the Billboard Top 100 chart. Well, honey, on the other hand, JYP puts out boy groups such as 2PM and 2AM, who respectively have the Monster Idol and Ballad Prince concept. 2PM does especially well with hits songs like 10 out of 10, Again and Again, and Heartbeat, also becoming a sensation in Korea and Japan. Here we see Nick Kun, a member of 2PM from Thailand, showing that K-pop is surely expanding beyond China and Japan. Now it would be safe to say that the second gen of K-pop was led by the mentioned groups. There are other groups such as 4Minute who made a strong impact and shift on the concept of girl groups. Then there was Kata, produced by DSB, and were known as big competitors to the Wonder Girls and Girls Generation. Japan went crazy over them. Everyone knew their songs and choreographies like Step and Mister. Now can we move on third gen? Well, maybe yes or maybe no. Some people draw the line by 10 years, as in 2000 to 2010. Some experts draw the line by sudden inflation and saturation of groups. A lot of <laughs> groups start to pop up, like Beast and Black Sea and Blue, B1A4, Block B, BAP, B2B, Vix, Infinite, Teen Tom, Newest, and more. For girl groups, After School, Tiara, Rainbow Secret, Miss A, Nine Muses, Girls Day, Sister, A Pink, ESID, AOA, and more. Though the groups that debuted in the late 2000s and early 2010s are tricky to categorize. Plus, from this point on, please don't hate me for not going in depth of every single group or missing some of them, because that would change the title of this video to K pop history explained in 200 girl, minutes. Money. But if we were to say there was a dominant group of this transition era, it's EXO. Yeah! EXO debuted in 2007 with two groups, EXO oh. M and EXO K, another experimental Sexy. approach from SM trying to divide and expand markets. Anyways, EXO yeah. wins, tops, and grows. Yeah. China is basically Great. EXO's. Go EXO has the crazy. biggest and also most notorious fandom in Korea. That's how much people love EXO. They put out hit after hits like Growl, Overdose, Call Me Baby, Monster, Loto. Their only rival might be the still yet hugely successful Big Bang. Wow. And then they slowly opened the doors to third gen. 
Now these are some of the characteristics of the third generation of K-pop. 1. Mass inflation and red ocean of idols, saturated market. 2. Globalization as a norm, catching the global audience is a must. 3. Idol audition survival programs. Because of the red ocean of idols, naturally the mass public begins to dislike K-pop idols due to lack of creativity, overlapping <laughs> concepts, and exhaustion of oh, idols. This is like K-pop idols due to lack of creativity. Oh, oh, don't tell fuck. me that shit is an industry, bro. What? Oh my Ooh. gosh, that's a clone. You know what this is? It's the boyfriend. From NCT, stay home. Creativity, she overlapping concepts, and exhaustion of idol music. This is when the public starts to divide the term idol with artist. Many major TV audition programs become popular looking for real talented singers and vocals rather than visually appealing dance based idols that only get to sing a few seconds in one song. Well, this is what the public thought at that time. I know there are exceptions among idols too. Oh yeah, in the meantime, in 2012, the worldwide viral hit, Size Gangnam Style happened, getting the once most viewed video on the planet, thanks to its addictive, crazy. hilarious Gangnam dance style. and beat. It, it got a number it, two on the Billboard oh, yeah. Hot 100. This was basically the first time that the entire world noticed this is a country called South Korea. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. And this that's what and I that's even North knew. Korea, by the way. In I didn't know K pop Despite lied. the influx of idol groups, the only ones that survive are groups that have amazing music oh, quality or musical yeah. talent or something different. Because the Korean market is so Twice. small and saturated, it now becomes a norm to have at least more than one global English speaking member in the group. This member usually is in charge of speaking during overseas interviews and tours. Not only member wise, but marketing and music wise, the attempts become more globalized too, testing out new markets such as South America. In the meantime, the public and entertainment companies want a system to get the best quality idols out there and that is by following the tv trend by making tv audition survival programs with worldwide contestants Damn. this system allows idols to gain publicity even before nice. debut and also verify popularity and talent although audition programs such as produce 101 to produce x have been extremely popular it got caught in a corruption and manipulation issue recently which <laughs> likely put out the credibility and support towards wow. these survival programs now Ooh. to name a few groups that are leading the third generation currently definitely the girl group trinity twice blackpink Red Velvet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Girl yeah. Twice yeah. has earned the absent yeah. nation's girl group title since Girls' Generation, along with major hit songs that dominated Korea and Japan mostly like Cheer Up, TT, Knock Knock, Likey, and Fancy. Interestingly, these girls were also a result of an audition oh, program called 16. YG's girl group Blackpink has the record of most YouTube views, 56.7 million in 24 hours, 24 with its Kill This Love yeah. music video topping Ariana Grande. Their music videos have this much views each, which saves my time on trying to explain and prove their popularity. Nah, they're big, also, one of the highest charts female k-pop group on they had like coachella 200. plus they had an epic stage at coachella too yeah. sm girl group yeah. velvet Great might not comment. be as big as the Great former comment. two in size but is always praised by the public and critics for their unique sound and high quality oh, songs yeah. time magazine has highlighted their versatile musical style and named them as one of the best k-pop groups billboard yeah. agreed too in 2019. fun fact red velvet was the first k-pop group to perform in north korea and kim jong-un adjusted the schedule to go see them <laughs> now, let's wow. start that's crazy. Hey, that pressure was crazy. crazy. Damn. He's you just in his schedule. Nigga cry. No, but you, you saw her, man. She snipped his ass. She don't know man, what to what? think. Damn. Damn. Like, nigga, that's, like, nigga, that's, nigga, that's King Jong Kook, nigga. You can't fuck up. You might die, nigga. Nigga, it's red. Look, we ain't gonna fuck up, nigga. Uh, I know they ain't gonna fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Guess what? Kicked the head after that, bro. What the hell? Red velvet. Red velvet. What you talking about? Stop playing. Stop playing. Stop playing. Come on, chat. Man, you but you see that crowd dude? They all stiff as hell. They know if they act that a certain way, man. If Kim not clapping, no one's clapping. <laughs> no no one. Happen. Man, no. I dare you to clap when that nigga don't clap standing nearby that nigga. They gonna have footage. You trying to? Uh, oh, oh, what do you mean? That ass, damn. Man, I didn't Rev, Rev Love it was like that. Yeah, that's that's right. from Rev, bro, Rev Love for, oh, man. That's crazy. crazy. Bro, y'all elevated, Korea, damn. Look at that, bro. Now, let's not try to leave that many other talented and hardworking girl groups wow. such as Mamamoo, Momoland, Luna, Eyes One, G Idol, CLC, Dreamcatcher, G Friend, Lovelies, Oh My Girl, Uju Sonyo, Kongwon Sonyo, Everglobe, Wiki Miki, and more. As for boy groups, it's hard to pick a definitive popularity or impact, but just to name a few, 17, NCT, GOT7, Winner, Icon, Monster X, 18, Stray Kids are definitely the biggest and most popular globally. Most of these groups actively go on world tours and appear on Western TV shows nowadays. And then there are groups <laughs> such as DAB, Impact, Victon, Astro, Pentagon, SF9, The Boys, Ace, JBJ, Golden Child, Intuit, UMB, Very, Very, One Us, and more. So many girl groups, I, I boy groups, well. mixed groups, new global audience, thus various music styles as well. You name it, K-pop has it. Oh, you don't like groups? Super produced modern electronic music? Maybe try IU out. She's Korea's nation's sister and also nation's singer. Been around since 2008 with numerous ballad and K-pop hit songs.
songs. Single handedly has the popularity equivalent to K pop's biggest idols. Wow. Then there's K hip hop RB, a whole scene of its Zico. own. Maybe check out Zico, who has an overlap background with K pop. Then there's triangle, Rock. Right? Maybe check out bands like Day6 and Flying the Rose and more. So, it's already 2020, and technically 10 years have passed again, and the line is blurring between third gen and fourth gen. Then, what would be the standards of dividing the generations? I can't be the one deciding, but just to add my personal two cents, maybe the line could be drawn by observing groups that start off already with a bigger fandom globally rather than domestically in Korea from the pre debut and rookie phase. In short, maybe okay. no more validation or dependence from Korean fans needed? Or there's an alternative view of simply drawing the line by post BTS. And yes, I know y'all are screaming, what? Not a single mention of BTS. Oh, BTS I was just about now, to say but that. hold on a little bit more. I have a whole buffet for you. Well, anyways, this whole generation dividing process is a whole debate subject of its own, so let's just leave it there and throw it to the comment section. Finally, there is one group that needs a thorough separate section in K pop history, and it is BTS. Yeah. BTS started off from a small company called Big Hit under the producer now named Hung Shi who was a former colleague and Ever. friend to JYP, Dave. but split paths to make his own company. Hung Shi gathered seven oh, you members. Just need that BTS. I ain't gonna to lie, you just needed that one. The concept and that one to just take you to the BTS different high. Like what? Their what? First years, often getting mocked by their Look at this equivalent to like 20 voice fucking groups. And apparently some Hold on, go back, go back. I missed that. What'd he say? Oh, no, yeah, yeah. mocked. Surround yourself with great people. Remember, his his homie was JYP. And yeah. JYP did what he did. Dude, and then now and he, he did, did what he did. He did both successful. Ain't no hating. Ain't, ain't no, no hating. hating. But shit, one nigga, I ain't gonna lie, make it. <laughs> Nah, I, trust me, JIP ain't losing sleep. Nah, he ain't losing sleep. No, for he sure. not losing that. Under the producer he, named Hung Shio, who was a former colleague and good friend to JYP, but split paths to make his own company. Hung Shio gathered seven members originally and planned to make a hip hop group. However, the concept and musical style diversified over the years. BTS didn't gain much attention during their first years, often getting mocked by their group name, that means Bulletproof Boy Scouts. And apparently, some That's what or many BTS people means? thought they were. That was a Bang Tang Seven. What? Bulletproof Boy Scouts. Bulletproof Boy That's kind of weak. I'm not going to lie, that shit. Hey, it might mocked deserted. by their group name that means Bulletproof Boy Scouts. And apparently some or many people thought their appearances were unpretty. However, BTS differentiated themselves with other idols by speaking about the unspoken in their lyrics, such as mental health, youth problems, social issues, and the journey towards loving oneself. BTS also made their own universe and story in their music videos. They made moderate success until they got mainstream with their songs like I Need You, Dope, Save Me, and Fire. We're told uh -oh. it. After that, every move they made pretty much became history. They topped the Billboard 200 charts four times in a row alongside wow, wow. the Beatles, appeared on multiple major Most American TV views. shows, got awarded by the Billboard Music Awards, AMA, That's all I gotta be said, times, bro. did a Grammys act, did a UN speech, did a cover of Times, had a stadium UN world speech. tours including Wembley and Saudi Arabia, sold over 20 million cumulative albums to this date. BTS has become so big Same. that they become expressed as the yeah, BTS actually. or Korean invasion just like the British invasion from the Beatles by multiple critics now. and journalists. Many point out that it's even more significant regarding the fact that BTS's music and lyrics were not in English but in Korean. Also started off as underdogs in the K-pop industry itself, struggling without the support of big capital nor media. In the meantime, there might have been attempts to compete with BTS, for example SM making their own Avengers by combining members from existing Super successful M. groups like SHINee, EXO, NCT into a collaborative single group called called Super M. Well, they did get a number one on Billboard 200, but many people criticized the method of bundling issues in the process. However, industry-wise, it was a fresh attempt that never happened in K-pop history, trying to officially combine members from different groups into one with an agenda to make success in the American or global market. And it is these new attempts that fuel K-pop to go further on. Anyways, back to BTS, it's not an overstatement to say that BTS is probably bigger than all the of K-pop combined at this point. The However, biggest. from Sotechi to BTS, yes. many groups no existed, cap. and every time, records were broken. People were surprised. Back then, no one imagined anything bigger than TVXQ, Girls' Generation, Big Bang, EXO, Gangnam Style. But here we are, K-pop is still evolving. The market is getting bigger and it's becoming more well known all around the world. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see what happens in the future of K-pop. Will it just disappear as a trend or get even bigger? Like it always has. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm okay. That was a really insightful video. Really I like good that video. Oh, really? Yeah. Ooh, like his approach. Yeah. Wasted no time. Yeah. Yeah. Shout, out, shout out to bro. Shout Full out to 20 bro. minutes was I thought I was minutes. watching it, this shit my own damn self. Right. <laughs> I forgot, damn nigga. We saw we on video. We on oh, shit. Really? <laughs> like dead ass. I'm over here telling my damn. This is interesting as right. hell. No, I feel like I learned a lot in that I 20 really minutes, bro. Damn, bro. Like they really catapulted like that, bro. Like it only takes one. One group. Boy, that one just. You know my big hit? 
bro i'm just in general you see these guys like just come up from, like they're underneath the radar you don't even know just untapped gold you know what i'm saying like bts bro untapped just gold taking a chance investments bro boy and then short app i know that investment boy Jeez. you know what works when your investments is also a hard investing on themselves with the amount of work they put in you feel me yup like the same way our parents invest in us you know what I'm saying when we're youngins and then now we're putting in hard work so we, you know we can invest back into them. To them you feel me come on man Woo. Taking a chance is hard because there's some groups that didn't make it. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell so, yeah. Nigga, probably 80%. Probably. Right. And then there's some groups that probably had like crazy expectations. Niggas was probably in the board like, damn, we're about to make a crazy one with this one. Flopped. That shit flopped. Flopped. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work. There's probably some talented people out there yeah. that just. You're just no, never gonna hard, make it, bro, because those the work. Uh, these individuals have mm -hmm. both, bro. That hard work and that talent. You know what I'm saying? But what I will say though for BTS, man, like when I wasn't even in the K-pop verse or none of that shit, bro. I used to see these niggas on Twitter everywhere. Everybody when yeah, BTS when I think of K-pop, I thought of BTS. 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 But BTS doesn't equal K-pop. Don't get it twisted now. It no, don't. We tapped in. Hey, that's cause, bro. He, bro, even then, like the first K-pop song I swear to God I ever seen for real was the Gangnam Style song. But like on its own, cause everybody, bro, that shit was everywhere. That right? wasn't really K-pop. That wasn't even K-pop. That was just music. I didn't, I, 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 I didn't even think of that shit. Yeah, until I, I saw no. what was it? Uh, Love was it? Love You by BTS, the most popular song they got. You know what I'm saying? I love. Was, I think it was, was like Dino. I think Boy it was Dynamite or something. I think it was Boy Love. It was like 2017. Bro, but like I the McDonald ad. McDonald ad. Yeah, oh, they had that no, too. Yeah, maybe, they had that. maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Hey, but that's the first time. Yeah, so that's maybe. when I first saw them. That's yeah. the first time I thought I ever thought, bro. That's isn't that that K-pop shit? Ever? Like, I think that's the first time in my life, bro. Like, swear to God, I thought that shit was K-pop. Yeah, but shout to the bush, bro. And shout out to the people that be performing, you know, the Red Velvet performing in North Korea. Yeah, like, they crazy. Doing a lot of crazy stuff. Bro. No, it's crazy. I didn't know Red Velvet did that shit. Y'all really surprised me. Yeah, that was a big ass shark nigga. Oh, what's the one? I, that was one of my favorite stuff. Bro, ever. come on. Even uh, even the Inception, bro, I know they were getting crazy. Hey, they're like, bro, what is this satanic shit? You know what I'm saying? And all that. But like, really, it did like trial and effort. You know what I'm saying? Trial, trial and effort. What's good about it is it's breaking barriers. You feel me? And you know, this is where I'm going to end with, right? That guy, you know, the person that did it, he gave a lot of examples. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's stuff for you, 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 and you. There's stuff for everybody when it comes to K pop. You know what I'm saying? Different flavors of cake, you know, forgive me using that analogy, but different flavors of cake out there. Whatever you want to eat, bro, there's going to be something for you if you're looking for cake. So when you see us up here, be like, we prefer this, this, and this. That's just our, our flavor, cake. man. It don't that say we don't hate okay. the other one. It might be a very thin slice, you know what I'm saying? But it's still our cake, you get what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? NSP fam, bro, once again, we appreciate y'all for sticking this far. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Y'all know what to do. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.